G'day mates and welcome to my CPAP humidifier masterclass. My name is Nick, I live in Australia and this is my channel CPAP Reviews. Now today's video demonstration, I'll be using a ResMed AirSense 10 auto set machine. However, the techniques you'll learn can be applied to pretty much any CPAP machine with a humidifier or a heated tube and they all have them. And why do they all have them? Because CPAP therapy can dry you the out pretty much. All that airflow tends to dry out your nose, your throat, your mouth, and it can also cause congestion, which makes it harder to breathe. So we add that humid air to the therapy, which just alleviates congestion, makes it easy to breathe, and stops you drying out. That's the basis of it. All right, let's begin, shall we? Here we go. Now, we can run this AirSense 10 with a standard tube, a non-heated tube, and I see a lot of people using a non-heated tube. By the end of this video, I can pretty much guarantee you'll all be shopping for a heated tube. Much better, you get more humidification, and it also enables you to optimize the humidification to reduce rain out. We'll talk about that more in a minute. All right, let's plug it in. We'll head into the settings, and away we go. It's like trying to undo a brass strap here, one-handed. Takes me back to when I was 18. Here we go. Not undoing too many brass straps these days. All right. What sort of channel is this anyway? My options. So we're going to the my options here. Humidity level, currently set to four. And with this machine, we can have off, so no humidity, right up to level eight. And what's happening there is a little water chamber here has a metal plate and that sits on a heater plate in here. And as we're increasing the humidity level, it's increasing the heat on the plate. The water turns to vapor. The higher the temperature of the plate, the more vapor, the more humidity. But as we're about to find out, there is a beautiful symbiotic relationship between humidity and air temperature. Really important lesson that I'm about to show you now. Now this first chart we'll take a look at shows us exactly how much vapor is added to the air as we increase our humidity settings and also the minimum room temperature you need to have to avoid rain out. Let's take a look. Now this blue line moving up here is the increase in water vapor as we increase our humidity settings here. Zero here, up to eight, that's we increasing the settings. And as we do so, more water vapor is added to the air. Now, the first thing I wanna show you is this. The chart isn't linear. You can see it here, it's not a straight line. It's more of a parabolic shape, you see? And if we look down here at setting one, you can see we've got 10 parts per million of vapor added to the air. We go to level two, it's only a really small increase, going up by one to 11. Jump to level three, it goes up by one again, up to 12. But look at the difference between five, six, seven, and eight. 18 to 23, difference of five. 23 to 27, difference of four. 27 to 34, difference of seven. So what I'm saying here is this, at these lower levels between one and four, when you're increasing, it's only adding a little bit extra, but between five and eight, each increase is a massive jump in humidification. All right, so that's a really important point. If you're feeling dry, down here at two, and you go to three, you're unlikely to notice a big difference. However, going from three up to five or six, yes, you'll likely notice a big difference. And let's check out quickly the red line here, which is the minimum room temperature to avoid rain out. Warm air can hold more moisture. So as we're increasing this blue line, we also need to increase the red line or we'll hit 100% absolute humidity and we get rain. It can't hold any more vapor in the air. It needs to condensate and remove some of that vapor. That's that beautiful love-hate relationship between air temperature and humidity. But the take-home message is exactly that. If you wanna increase humidity, you want more vapor, you're feeling dry, you're congested, then you need to increase the air temperature as well of your room or you'll get rain out. And this, here it is here. So down here at setting number one, we need a minimum room temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit 
sorry to my Aussie mates watching, please forgive me. And up here at eight, you can see we need 90 degrees Fahrenheit to avoid condensation. Really interesting. And that was with the standard non-heated CPAP tube here, okay? Which you will now throw away and you will go and purchase the Climate Line heated tube system for your device. If you have a S9, AirSense 10, AirSense 11, just get the model for your device because they do change them up a little bit. Typical ResMed, and away you go. Climate Line Air connected. So this activates climate control and our settings have now changed. My options, and you can see now it says climate control. Currently in manual, I can change that to automatic. We'll do this in a minute. Keep it in manual for now. And you can see now I've got humidity level, which we had before with the standard tube, but we also have tube temperature. So we can control the air temperature inside the tubing now, instead of having to change our room temperature with a heater or cooler or whatever. Nobody knows this information. The clinicians don't know it. Your doctors don't know it. If they did, they wouldn't have given you a standard tube to begin with. All right, but check this out. So at a setting of one, the difference is four. Here's 10, that's your standard tube. And with the heated tube, it's delivering 14. That's a big difference there. Remember in the first chart, we had to dial up our settings to four to reach 14. With the heated tube, it's on number one. But look at this massive jump here. Number two, 19 versus 11, nearly double the amount of vapor in the air, heated tube versus standard tube. 12, 22, once again, big jump, 14, 24, big, big differences in the numbers here. And then it starts to taper in. And once you reach level eight, 34, 34, so it tapers back in again. So this next chart here is a bit of a guide as to where to set your heated tube level for your different humidity levels. If you're running your climate control in manual mode versus automatic. We'll talk about automatic in a moment, but currently we're just looking at manual mode. So here at level one, we're getting 14 parts per million of water vapor, and we need sort of 60, 61 for the tube temperature to avoid rain out. Level two, 70, and so on. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Once we hit level five here, all right, 27 parts per million of vapor, we need 86 degrees. And that's fine because the maximum here is 86. But when we get to level six, uh-oh, we've hit 30 now. We do need a higher temperature, realistically. However, the maximum level that tube can get to is 86. So this is when you can start to get rain out with these systems. Level six, seven, and eight, where it goes from 30, 32 to 34. The temperature remains the same, but it really needs to be going up, but it can't. And this is why CPAP companies advise you to position your CPAP machine below the height of your bed. So any sort of rain out condensation runs back down the tube into your humidifier tank. Not as convenient, I know, but if you're having issues with gurgling and moisture and rain out, but you want a nice high humidity level, then that's an option for you. And the last chart we'll take a look at is a comparison between running your climate control mode in manual versus automatic. And I bet 95% of you are running it in automatic right now because that's what you were told by a clinician and your clinician told you that because they don't understand how it works. So they say, put it in auto and it will just do its thing. But there is a big difference and we'll go through that now. When you're running climate control in manual mode, we're dealing with what's called absolute humidity. You're changing the humidity levels and it's corresponding with a set amount of humidity. When we're running it in automatic mode, we're not setting the humidity levels. The machine is setting the humidity levels, but what's it setting that based on? It's basing that on the air temperature. It's looking at the air temperature and whatever that air temperature is, it's delivering 85% relative humidity to that air temperature. So if you've got a really low air temperature, you'll only receive a small amount of humidification. You have a really high air temperature in your tube, in your room, doesn't matter where it is, then you'll get a lot of humidity. That's the difference there. 
But what I want to show you is this. Now the green line is the humidity provided in automatic mode and the blue line in manual mode. And we can instantly see we can achieve higher levels of water vapor in manual mode versus automatic mode. And what's interesting is in automatic mode, we can really only reach level five. You can see right here, it tapers straight off 26 parts per million water vapor. With manual mode, we can keep going up much higher to 34. So if you're currently running your climate control in automatic mode, but you're still dry, congested, struggling, then you need to change to manual mode so you can reach those much higher levels of humidification. Otherwise, you're stuck here at level five. So the take-home message from today's video, I know I make things complex sometimes, I'm sorry, but I just feel you're better off knowing this information. It might take a little while to learn it, but if it means you're not dry every night, fantastic. That's what I think anyway. Take-home message is this. Number one, get yourself a heated tube. Increase levels of humidification. Awesome. Two, less rain out. Double awesome. Number two, if you want to run high levels of humidification, you also need to have warm air as warm air can hold more water as vapor compared with cooler air. And last of all, number three, if you want increased levels of humidification with your climate control, you need to change it from automatic to manual mode. Otherwise, you're stuck at level five. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Until next time, sleep well, make every moment count, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. G'day, mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.